Well, finally, with this movie, we get to begin working with Poser as it was designed to start doing a little bit of scene building and adding figures to it. We are going to bring in a motorcycle that is not part of the Poser content prop library. We're going to connect it to our figure. We'll make it so that our figure is actually like it's riding a motorcycle. So if the motorcycle banks, well, our character needs to bank with that. And these aren't things that automatically happen inside of Poser. You have to control this environment. The big thing with Poser is that it's designed, well, for posing characters, just like its name would indicate. What happens when you bring in an object is that Poser automatically assumes that whatever object you bring in, you want it to be a subset of the selected character. There is not a way in Poser to deselect everything in the scene, so one character will always be selected. In this case, it's Andy, our friendly, somewhat translucent mannequin. Well, we're not going to want that, but we're going to have to change it later on because that is the default that Poser will bring it in with. Let's bring in our motorcycle. We'll come up to File, Import. I happen to know that this file is in the OBJ format. The way to tell what format is is at the end of the file name. There'll be a .obj if it's Wavefront Object. If it's Lightwave, it's .lwo, .dxf, .3ds. And then we've got different ones for Collada and ZBrush. You'll know what those are. So I'm going to select Wavefront. It's one of the most ubiquitous formats for a file exchange. There's some options on the modal dialog box that pops up. Centered, yep, I want that. Place on the floor, that too. We'll let Poser do the math for that. Then there's a percent of standard figure size. Currently it's set to 100. A word of, I guess an FYI type of thing here really, is that while we're going to select 100%, I doubt this prop's gonna come in scaled perfectly to our character. And the reason for that is there is not a universal exchange format for scale. So you can bring in other props, you'll probably have to resize them, I'm anticipating that here. Finally, we have another option selected, make polygon normals consistent. I'll explain that later when we're dealing with textures, but I'll select OK. We get a dialog that asks us to drive to where the prop is. If you have access to the working files, chapter 7, BMW R90. We've got a bunch of texture maps in here that get applied to the geometry, which is the .obj format. We'll select that and double click on it. Now our motorcycle comes in. We can see that Andy is the parent. The BMW happens to be a prop or subset of that. It's not connected. Just like working with the cane, this particular prop does not have a parent set to it. But the truth is, I don't want the motorcycle to be parented to the character. I want that inverted, and we'll deal with that shortly in an upcoming movie. However, we can see our motorcycle. It's a little bit small. It looks kind of like a clown motorcycle right here. So let's change the scale of this. I'm going to bring this up, and we're just going to do it by eye. There's no perfect way to do that. As I make the motorcycle a little bit bigger, it sinks into the floor. So we're going to come over here to our parameters dials. Under the Y translate, we'll go ahead and bring that up to something a little more believable. It's facing the wrong direction. I don't want to change everything in my scene to match the motorcycle. We'll make the motorcycle obey the scene. So under the Y rotate, I'm going to select the degrees directly and simply enter 180 so this spins around. Finally, under the Z translate, Let's push this into the scene a little bit so our character's about where the seat needs to be. And we're set here. We've brought in a wavefront object. It happens to be a subset. We'll be changing that in the next movie. But we're ready to go, and that's how you import items you will use as props or anything else in the scene inside of the poser world.